Lovely day at Heathrow. Take off from runway 27 right. We'll put in the Compton 3 Foxtrot departure. We'll make it a hook takeoff. Execute all of that. In this case, I would uh, you'd have these on yeah. before takeoff, and then once you get airborne, you turn them back to auto. And you have continuous ignition or no? Automatic continuous ignition whenever the icing is detected. Does it have a uh, warning on the heat if you have an ice detector or no? If, uh, it'll tell you if the ice detector fails. It'll also tell you if you've got these, if I had these selected on, right. and, the te and the outside air temperature was greater than 10, yeah. it would give me a warning saying, hey, turn them off. Storm's over. Because <laughs> uh, I don't like wind, so I can avoid it. Ready for a once around the pattern. But a nice snowy day at Heathrow. Take off checklist complete. So this this checklist with the boxes, that's called open loop, meaning I have to do the steps. So I hit the recall switch, check the check the displays, and then I have to click it off myself. Same thing. There are no notes. Notes would be here. Auto brakes. I'd set an auto brake setting. We'll go max auto brakes. Landing data and reference. Check it. Looks good. Brief up the approach. And then go right to the approach checklist. Check the altimeters at their current, they are. Now, see the boxes here? When I go to the landing checklist, the next one, no boxes. They're sensed on switch position. So I set the speed brake to armed, automatically checks the step off for me. And you'll see more on the landing checklist. We'll fly the ILS. The flaps have, I'm going to demonstrate the load relief feature that the flaps have. So I'm trying to speed us back up above 170 because that's flaps 30 speed. Oh, yeah, you showed it to the oh I did. Okay, I'm not sure if everyone saw it. So I go flap 30 now. Load relief. It won't, it's protecting me from overspeeding the flaps. Fantastic system. So it won't deploy the extra flaps? It's going to wait. It's basically telling you, hey, I'm going to load relief. I'm not going to deploy until you slow down. Oh, okay. Bizarrely enough, the Jet, the jet Stream 41 has the same feature. Yeah, a lot, a lot of aircraft do now. The 777's got it too. Yeah. The, ma the main difference is over the 777, heads up display, display real estate, for lack of a better term. You've got at least twice as many displays. I can, I can manipulate five out of six. I always need to have engines somewhere. I, can't, I can never get rid of these. Yeah. But other than that, I can change this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then if if this one fails, this moves there automatically, and it's fantastic. Your EFB talks to your CDU and vice versa. I can download data from either way, send data across, can't do that in the 777. You get the warnings, uh, and it's just, this is a sports car 777, is my best way of describing it. All these items automatically complete on the landing checklist. Didn't have to click anything off. It just sends a switch position, or in this case, flat position. The only thing I can see is your 
what's on there. Everything, everything you see here is so it's in, basically PFD. It's basically a, a, a blown up PFD. Okay. It magnifies the PFD at least three times, in my estimation, if not four times. So you can you can keep the box on the crosshairs and see the runway. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And there's a three degree line, a three degree line going across the HUD. So I'm, I put that right on where the uh, pappies are, at about a thousand feet down the runway. Put the flight path vector on top of that, and they're good. There's aim point airspeed. Don't even have to think about it. Fifty. Thirty. Who's that? Yeah, uh, let me bring that down. Map right on my nav display, and I can bring the 10-9 page over here. If I'm in the 777, I've got to put the airport moving map here. Where am I going to put my 10-9 page? I have to switch back and forth. Right. But I can have the 10-9 here, moving map here. FAA is happy because I'm. I have the 10-9 page up to navigate off of, but in reality, this is heading up. So you'll see, as I start taxiing, I make my clearance on the next taxiway. I can actually dial my range down even more. I'll make this next left turn on Alpha 8 taxiway right here. So again, the 777 has this, but not right in front of me. I have to look down and to the right on the 777. As we mentioned, Alpha A taxiway. Hey, look at that. Alpha A taxiway. It absolutely is a, it's a dream for situational awareness. Okay, so now we got the AP running. I'll, I'll uh, stop us here. Show you the shutdown checklist now. Set the parking brake. So we're going to shut the engines off. Fuel control switch is just sensed. Hydraulic panel. Sensed. Fuel pumps. Automatically sensed flaps. Unfortunately, need the hydraulics. So by me turning the center hydraulic pumps back on, I just incompleted that step, and that step is going to be incomplete until they get all the way up. Functions fire. How about the? I don't like the left engine today. Approaching minimums. Fire engine left. Let's see, left minimums. engine, confirm. Left, left, shut it down. Pull the handle, fire the bottle. Notice we're still on approach. No change to the auto land right, status. The Engine's shutting down, the rudder's activating, but the there's none of this. That's unreal. Can we see the flight control synoptic? Of course you can. Rudder's compensated, rudder trims in, automatic, didn't have to do a thing.